Welcome to the September 23rd, 2011 edition of Inside Rensselaer, the video podcast about the people, programs, and events at Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute. Funded by a $2.65 million grant from the National Science Foundation and support from Rensselaer's Computational Center for Nanotechnology Innovations, Rensselaer will receive a newer, faster supercomputing system, the IBM Blue Gene Q. The system will also include a multi-terabyte memory storage accelerator, petascale disk storage, a rendering cluster, and remote display wall systems. Many times faster than the current system, the new supercomputing system will further boost Rensselaer's leadership in high-performance computing. The system will be installed in 2012 and will be housed in CCNI with the remote visualization workstations and a display wall in the Curtis R. Priam Experimental Media and Performing Arts Center. A new book published by Sally Ride Science entitled Light, Energy You Can See, features a section detailing research by Rensselaer Associate Professor Mariano Figueroa. The book aims to engage 4th through 8th graders in the big ideas in life, earth, and physical sciences. Figueroa is director of the Light and Health Program at the Lighting Research Center. In her work, she focuses on the relationships between light and our daily biological cycles, or circadian rhythms, and strives to better understand how the retina converts light signals into neural signals for the circadian system. Her research helps to illuminate the multifaceted role that light plays in our everyday lives. Rensselaer welcomes Joseph Cassidy, Dean of Student Life at the University of Dallas, as director of the Rensselaer Union. Cassidy, a 25-year veteran in the field of student affairs, will join Rensselaer on October 24th. Prior to his position at the University of Dallas, Cassidy served as Dean of Student Life at Dartmouth College. He holds an MBA from the University of Notre Dame and a Master's in Education from Eastern Illinois University. Cassidy is also a member of several national organizations. Rensselaer is one of about 20 colleges and universities in the U.S. that operates its student union using a student-run structure. Rensselaer's union has a multi-million dollar budget that supports more than 200 clubs, organizations, and intercollegiate athletics. Rensselaer marked the 10th anniversary of September 11, 2001 with a memorial service on the lawn of the Rensselaer Union. Featured speakers were President Shirley Ann Jackson, Vice President for Student Life Timothy Sams, and Grand Marshal Lee Sharma. Rensselaer chaplains Reverend Beth Illingworth and Iman Jafar Sebkawi also spoke words of remembrance, healing, and encouragement. The singing of the national anthem by the Rensselaerics and the presenting of colors by ROTC Color Guard were followed by a moment of silence. Some Rensselaer professors found unexpected new avenues for their research following the events of September 11th. Al Wallace, an expert in decision sciences and systems engineering, and his team focused on the challenges of infrastructure interdependence in the wake of 9-11. Using complex mathematics and computer algorithms, Wallace's group constructed working models of infrastructure interdependency. Partnering with the U.S. Department of Homeland Security and the University of North Carolina, Wallace's team developed prototype software to help emergency response officials see interdependencies. The software can help officials identify and plan for potential problems. Beyond the personal impact of the terrorist attacks, Jose Joaquin Veras was one of several Rensselaer professors tasked with studying and learning from the aftermath of the tragedy. His research project started with air travel, but took an unexpected turn to a topic entirely new to academia, the logistics of donations. Today, Hogwin Veras is the leading international authority on the topic. His team, supported by the NSF and other federal agencies, is academia's largest group dedicated to the study of humanitarian logistics. A group of Rensselaer scientists are working to optimize a promising new nanomaterial called nanoblades for use in hydrogen storage. Their testing of this new material has shown that nanoblades can store and release hydrogen extremely fast and at low temperatures when compared to similar materials, making nanoblades ideal for use in onboard hydrogen storage for next generation hydrogen or fuel cell vehicles. Using a technique called reflection high energy electron diffraction, researchers also discovered that the nanoblades are recyclable, meaning they can be recharged and reused many times. The team's findings are published in the September 2011 edition of the International Journal of Hydrogen Energy. Local congressmen Paul Tonko and Chris Gibson recently joined President Shirley Ann Jackson at the Center for Automation Technologies for an open house media day. The event focused on robotic research taking place at Rensselaer and showcased several newly acquired robot platforms. Also from CATS, John Wen, a professor in the Department of Electrical Computer and Systems Engineering and director of the center, was featured in the Approach blog post, Three Degrees with John Wen. 
Wen answers questions about robots, CATS, and campus. International relations expert Steve Brayman, Associate Professor in the Department of Science and Technology Studies, has been awarded the William C. Foster Fellowship. Brayman will be spending one year at the State Department headquarters in Washington, D.C., serving in the Office of Euro-Atlantic Security Affairs in the Bureau of Arms Control, Verification, and Compliance. Professor and Director of Research at Rensselaer's Lighting Research Center, Naharaja Narandran, was recently an invited speaker at the 2011 SPIE Optics Plus Photonics Conference in San Diego, California. Narandran's presentation asked the question, is solid-state lighting ready for the incandescent lamp phase-out? Boleslaw Szymanski, the Claire and Roland Schmidt Distinguished Professor of Computer Science, was awarded the title of Professor of Engineering by the President of Poland in the Presidential Palace in Warsaw. USA Hockey selected Seth Appert, head coach of the men's hockey team, as the head coach of the 2011 U.S. Under-18 Select Team that competed in the Memorial of Ivan Halinka Tournament in August. Joining Appert as the video coordinator was Hockey Operations Coordinator Kevin Anderson. And the National Association of Collegiate Directors of Athletics has selected Jim Knowlton, Rensselaer Director of Athletics, as an Under Armour AD of the Year. Knowlton is the Division III Northeast recipient. President Shirley Ann Jackson and her husband, Professor Morris Washington, hosted the annual Welcome Back Reception at the President's Residence on September 1st. The reception was a chance for faculty, new and returning, to meet and catch up with each other, and Rensselaer's newest faculty members were introduced. Rensselaer will induct its new members to the Alumni Hall of Fame today. Inductees include Rensselaer's 11th President, Livingston Houston 13, architect Peter Bolin 58, digital camera inventor Stephen Sasson 72, pioneering genome explorer Claire Fraser Ligert 77, and molecular geneticist Jeffrey Friedman 77. The Alumni Hall of Fame was founded in 1995 to recognize the important and far-reaching contributions made by Rensselaer graduates. And finally, a word from Human Resources. Rensselaer has partnered with TIAA CREF to launch a new education program called Retirement Know-How. The program will give Rensselaer employees new insight on how to best plan for retirement. The Retirement Know-How program will provide individuals with information to help them meet their retirement needs. More information is available through the Division of Human Resources. And that's it for this issue of Inside Rensselaer. For these stories and more, go to www.rpi.edu slash about slash inside. Thanks for listening. <laughs>